so to introduce the topic is that so we had had lately several developments that are kind of like envisioning the different structures that we have developed um uh, some of them by themselves were fairly abstract, but like putting some more meat into their bones. Um, and one of them, was, of course, there are um, sessions in Finland, which was like a first physical meeting for XORG, uh, mini applause for, the, for this, and mini, mini applause to Martin to, to make it possible, by the way. Um, um, but there are other developments that um, also kind of point to that. And um, I think it kind of introduces an interesting point that we can take some of these early directions and, and try to then envision of, okay, if these kind of structures were in play, in the widest sense of in play, in culture. Um, uh, so, for example, like that there were people playing it, etc. What could happen through that? Like, what kind of um, play they would induce? What kind of conventions that play would build? And essentially, what kind of culture of play could be born around that? And to shortly take a deep dive into this sort of culture of play concept, it's it's this idea of like um, if you have a play that merges with, at least in some level, with real life, and then it becomes this sort of que question that the play starts to behave like a subculture. Um, maybe a very small one, doesn't really matter. Like, uh, like, it actually happens with all the games. Like, you can say chess is a subculture, and, uh, and you can use this framing towards chess, certainly. Um, the ever-present conventional example is that not only that there's the chess clubs and chess tournaments, etc., but then there's a chess player, a certain kind of figure of uh, personality, and behavior, and thinking, and so on. But then once you have chess, you can think of, you know, Dota 2 players, etc. But you can go wider from there, think of role players, live role players, and so on. All of that context is tracing of like culture of play uh, and precisely how a certain game structure, its mechanisms, if it starts to be even a little present in culture at large, then it starts to um, have interactions with that culture. So I wanted to um, like make a short, very condensed. Uh, let's call it speculative in introduction, which is like speculative fiction, like like science fiction uh, in terms of speculative fiction, as the J. G. Ballard and other writers of the 70s wanted to call science fiction speculative fiction um, in that kind of sense. Um, so, um, and and for this, I will I could challenge anybody. But also Pablo Martin, who were in the sessions um, in in Finland, uh, particularly to make interjections and jumpings in, because this kind of touches upon some of those issues. An introduction of um, a semiverse minor, minor, like mining minor, um, as a speculative piece of speculative fiction from a possible future. Um, uh, so, semi-inverse, first of all. Um, this won't be a proper nar narration, not a story. So, um, you can give me an uh, excuse for that. But, but semi-inverse is the concept that we processed also in, in, in Finland that uh, so we have metaverses, etc., different kind of multiverse um, concepts around, um, let's say, an expanded sense of structuring reality. But semiverse was this idea that, um, like, whenever we meet um, so-called reality, like 
even including now, there's, there's always a semiverse, which is like, if you see a chair, um, that idea that it's a chair inter enters often your mind immediately. Uh, and if you see a window, the same thing, that's a cafe. It's not a thought that takes, uh, it's actually kind of the thought you often start with, that you see a cafe and then you think it's a cafe and then you start reflecting. Um, so all of that is just in the kind of semi-verse, like the, the verse of meaning we live in. Not a particular language, but something that is very language oriented, but has a lot of other tools, but, how, but essentially answers the question of how the environment is first, first or second doesn't really matter, but it's, it's an environment of meaning as much that is, it is a spatio or call it whatever environment. So, um, and semiverse is something that, um, we maybe in this sort of uh, metaverse, etc. discourse, talk to a little off or process to a little off um, because it, it it will extend to the metaverse as well, uh, uh, um, and like having a more open or more present discourse about it would be useful. So that's one thing. Mm. Any interjections? Anybody want to jump in? It's not a story, so collective voices included. Not yet, but I, I do. I probably will as you continue. Do you disagree or agree with my semiverse description? I, I agree. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's bad because that means uh, I, I boringly agree. Okay. <laughs> okay, Buck. Uh, Martin, <laughs> anyway, like if, uh, jump in Martin or anybody, uh, if you want. Okay. That's semiverse, but then minus. Now this gets a slightly more maybe poetic, uh, other things as well, but it's like, okay. So we have like, that's a cafe, that's a door, that's a chair, etc. but then there is a certain kind of ever present normativeness to this kind of semi versus discourse, which there definitely is. That it kind of likes, uh, like there is a hegemony of power in that. Um, that it kind of wants to say, like, oh, it's a chair, don't overthink it, etc. Et and when you start overthinking it, it usually brings you problems. Maybe slight interest, but also problems with the discourse. It's like if you say it's completely something else, you will find yourself in trouble communication. If you start like saying, well, we could think of it in other ways, you can create a kind of local disruption, maybe with the people you're with, but you're <clears throat> finding yourself defended by the forces of the semi -averse. It's like, if you're challenging this being a chair or this being a cafe, this particular place, the semi verse is there to defend itself. Uh, like you have to do a lot of work to make the even a particular cafe something else than a cafe, which is an understandable thing, but I think a thing that is useful to note itself. So, so then we can go to this sort of, oh, I promise something poetic or lyrical, so I'll get there. Um, uh, like, what if this was a surface, but then underneath the surface, there is a whole underworld that you can dig in, like, um, uh, that you look at some certain things and you start to see them differently. It's almost like digging under the surface and because you're digging under the surface, it's almost like a corridor, like, and yes, we're very intentionally thinking almost like a dungeon or a labyrinth. Um, and that uh, that you start to read the chair or the cafe or whatever in different fashion, uh, that's probably mostly for you or maybe the people you're with. But in this sense of like digging into the underworld, it's kind of sensible, like it's uh, you're in the dark, but you are there and you're understanding that. And and. What if you start taking pride of the fact that you're kind of going under the surface and 
taking pride of the fact that you go into the darkness. Um, that once you make it something else than a chair or a cafe or whatever, um, you're kind of losing support because much of the semiverse depends on the support of cafe, chair, whatever. Once you go off from that, you're kind of in the darkness. And the light you're carrying is the light that you made, which is like you made it somewhat different, but that's that's really the scene you see. The rest is in the darkness. Like what's around here is not really apparent. So very much in a kind of like underworldish um, metaphors. So <clears throat> this this is a very rough. There, there's other things. The world is sort of un, semiverse mining, um, but that is, I think, one way to condense that vision, uh, and then. Alongside that, we started to play with how to enable this with the kind of tools that we were making, how to enable this semiverse minor. So I wanted to introduce this question, like, and it's certainly like just one question among many, but it, I think an interesting one is like, what if there was a culture of semiverse miners? What if there were, a, or a subculture? that would kind of take pride in the fact that they kind of like take find spots to mine in, which they probably find like enriching in some fa fashion for themselves at least. And then uh, they have tools to mine, like how to go through the fact that the chair is a chair. And then when they get things, they also find ways to bring things out of the mines, like to ch uh, share what they found or take others into the mine. Uh, so while it's metaphoric, it's very, or allegoric maybe, uh, uh, because it's fairly functional. Like uh, like you can think of this, like you find new meaning, there's immediately a question of how do you share it, et cetera, and so on. Um, and that in itself is an interesting perspective. Um, so that's my second package. That's mostly the minor package of the semi inverse. Do I get any interruptions now? Yes. Good. Great. <laughs> um, there's two things mm -hmm. from my side. So the first is the way that you describe, and I'm, I'm trying to make this short, which is not going to succeed because I have four minutes left. But I, So the first thing is the way that you describe this, um, almost the movement of going beneath mm -hmm. the semiverse. You 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 mobilize the image of the dungeon there or mega dungeon or mm -hmm. what, what you call it, and um, that is not how I would describe the experience of kind of passing out of the semi universe. Good, um, because I think we've all had those, had that experience, and so I sure. think we can somewhat report of it. And my my reportage would definitely not um, engage those types of images. Mm -hmm. It's like we've had a we've had a um, kind of sidetrack exchange now on was it now on Discord or Telegram? I think probably Discord around this Nietzsche uh, text and the kind of human as master builder of uh, gigantic domes of meaning, as if on liquid undergrounds meaning kind of like the spinning of the spinning of um, conceptual relations or meaning relations basically out of thin air and so if anything my i would describe my experience of kind of passing outside so to speak of the uh, you know even momentarily because that's what i guess is is the best one can uh, achieve like I would describe it as a kind of, you know, puffing up of spores or feathers or kind of threads and and and, you know, fibers of a spider web, that then attach together again in one way or the other to pre-existing nodes or non-pre-existing nodes. So this kind of, um, I guess, what I'm kind of put, trying to put a finger on is the stability that is conjured up and the kind of track likeness of the image of the dungeon or mega dungeon 
um, for me is, is maybe a bit of a too heavy and too known connotation, just as a kind of image uh, comment. The second comment though is maybe a little bit more um, curious, I would hope, is that I think, Pekko, what you describe, or like the way you speak about this possible operation, it seems to me like you almost identify in quite detail, quite some detail, um, some artist communities that I know. It's mm -hmm. like a description. It's it it read like a description to me. I don't know if you're familiar with like the Kino Box guys, like Risto Boronen and 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 Tuomo uh, Vuota and Oma and and so and 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 the work that they've been doing. Um, And it's just like, I just feel that what you speak of is really existing. Yeah, it's just I think it is. And I, yeah, and I don't, I don't even say that you wouldn't say that, but like, like the, the way, the, 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 where I would kind of localize that would be, um, and here we come to a thing that has been bouncing around already, like many times in between us or like in our, in our exchanges, uh, is, that is may possibly localized in, 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 in practices that do not initiate kind of in the conceptual domain, but they initiate maybe in the, in the material domain or, or, or other type of practical domain. Not saying that those are not also governed by conceptual approach, because they are, mm -hmm. but because they or like the material domain, if that's even, or maybe man has to say domains, I don't know, possibly, um, has the, in my experience, the power of just by its own kind of con composition to eject you. Like one of the things that I've always found a more kind of useful example because it's really true and I think quite easily traceable is uh, coming from my, my experience as a furniture builder, the piece that falls off of the saw. So I, you make a plan and you say like, that's the thing I want to be building. And then you kind of, you know, set your machine or whatever it is that you're working with to produce that thing for you. And in the moment you make it, you realize that, that another thing just also came from the saw on the other side of the part that you meant to be keeping. And those type of things, of course, at a time, you know this 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 metaphor doesn't last forever because at a time in, in this practical situation you are able to kind of project that and pick it up and so you have already built a kind of beyond the membrane type of semiverse that is accessible to you and others through the practice that you have been uh, doing like um but there's there's kind of springs somehow in that domain that can eject you momentarily until you reconnect is what i would say yeah like um there, there's many kind of responses like um and also like i'm hogging the space though but um but also trying to be quick about it to leave space for others like um like in in terms of the there are such things i personally kind of look for things that you find that there are already such things like finding something completely non-existent is often actually an exercise of finding something that is kind of deemed to be unworkable but i, I think it often is more uh, useful to find something that already exists as a practice and i do think actually this kind of thing exists in a very wide spectrum um uh, not under that name of course but like similar practices but rather if you then find ways to instrumentalize build tools upon a phenomena that is like um there in human culture but not something that human culture has wouldn't say systemized but kind of build um a discourse yeah like uh that there's there's two little discourse of how to do that and so like like in a way like something like literature or i don't know sculpture painting etc 
uh, much of the development is that there is this basic, basic practice of we can make images, but then there's the whole discourse around that. And that discourse opens up branches and developments and development that branches out of things. And, and in this practice, I would say such a cultural discourse uh, is still way too limited. Uh, so yeah, so I'm, I'm, I, I think claiming of unique, unique, uniqueness is, is a very questionable strategy in general, like, is it useful? Like sometimes maybe it is, but usually it's just like over emphasized. So that's one thing. Uh, then secondly, like, um, I definitely agree with your uh, take that this particular thing, like the minor, the underworld, etc., cetera, is a, it, it is a particular approach. I think every approach is particular approach. And I don't think particular approaches are a problem. Rather, if only one particular approach comes to rule Uber Alice, that's a problem. It's, it's, it's more that actually the particularities can be personalities, you know, just like in art. It's like <clears throat> the fact that somebody takes a particular direction just because they like to is a good thing. If that's not guiding the whole field, but rather forming a branch in the field. Uh, and that that allocates for diversity. It's an ecosystem that allocates for diversity in addition to some kind of finding of common development. So while saying that, I'm saying that with a certain sense that it's certainly a kind of like a certain way of walking. Uh, this is also why I think of it as an allegory, because it's in the forest, or at least a branching bunch of allegories. Like you can take a completely different way of uh, going through that and then end up in different places. And, and if you do, you're making something that is useful precisely because it's different. So I, and actually I think the whole uh, pursuit of or endeavor of trying to find the way of getting there would be problematic from the get-go. Um, so just to be clear, like um, if I if I speak about the way that I perceive the ejections that I have experienced of the from the semiverse, that is of course non-destructive to other yeah. uh, to other experiences. And beyond, like or to the other point saying that that exists um is also not really a thing it was mm -hmm. more to kind of like how to say put into the picture yeah um that there are and you understand i mean you know mm -hmm. where i'm coming from and why that is also important for me to say that because i'm kind of you know between these um or like i i i, I i've I'm, a, I'm an operator in the conceptual co or concept-based discussions that we have as much as mm -hmm. I'm an operator in space. And like for me kind of understanding the relationship or the many uh, variants, so to speak, in materiality and like la 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 that, that exists between the two has always been a thing uh, of, of importance. Um, so this is why that pointing that one out is is one uh, but it's also just it. It was it was meant as nothing more than an, addi an addition to the discussion, because also I think if we think of if we speak of um, how can processes of getting beneath, so to speak, the skin of the mm -hmm. like beneath the semiverse skin, how can they be um, motored? How can they be started up? It's certainly, I believe, helpful to think that there's practices that have um, that have found ways to do that, mm. even if they might not be aware that what they're doing, or they wouldn't be calling like their operation like a semi-overse mining, might well do mm. that. So, like, it's a, it's a, it's for it's for combination possibly of these. Yeah, I, I think I. Super shortly, I think actually that is an 
inevitability that whatever your practice is, however you approach this, will be a particular thing. And none of the pro approaches, even if you spend million years on it, will not be a generality. Uh, and you like taking other approaches is an enrichment in itself, but that says at the same voice um, and at the same time that actually taking a particular approach is okay because that's the that's the nature of um, diversity that like it's not to say once again this is super alles, this is general but it's saying like it's a way to conceive that but not in the suppression of the other things but uh how hey that you yeah. Use the use a mechanic of raising a hand. So, <laughs> oh, I I don't want to just to interrupt the. the no, no, there, there's no like it's it's about space of inter interruption. Mm -hmm. Just I had because it is the first time I'm hearing generally about the semiverse minor blah blah. So and that's why for my better understanding, based on your explanation and the conversation with Martin. It came to my mind the whole idea of a platonic idea mm. that the abstraction layer am i right or can you i'm totally i can i don't I just, i'm just asking so because it, the platonic idea coming to my mind the whole abstraction layer that coming to a one real concrete example as we are as an object Am I wrong in finding similarity, or I can map it, or just just make me clear? That's it. It is all my question. I mean, it's it's a big kind of worms, like in a way, like how the Platonic ideal is in a discourse that then goes to Aristotle, and then all the way through, like like uh, in the, like we been currently having discussion on Nietzsche, and and also make a practical side tour. The Discord is in playtest and will invite you in. Like I, I think we should open it up to people once we got out of it from playtest. But uh, but it's it's kind of actually in the same discourse. Uh, the Nietzsche Nietzsche uh, Nietzsche's take on the particular topic, which is very much in light of the Platonic thing. I, I think one can take it all the way down to Plato or stop at any point of the way or go beyond Nietzsche and go to uh, 20th century, et cetera, take certain kind of conceptions from there. Um, uh, um, but but the key thing is like, uh, like you can also take it actually practical in the sense of like you're looking at an environment I'm seeing a chair, what is happening? Um, if I want to do something with that, then it being just the chair, what are my instruments? What are my techniques, etc.? I think we're very much in that utterly practical question as well. And I know Martin would agree with that, even though his, his take on kind of what's the premise of approaching that is might be a little bit different but um but that's that's kind of like one topic we have been discussing is like like how to do more with meaning like it seems that we cannot really get rid of meaning and and maybe that's a kind of futile exercise uh, to completely get rid of it and and maybe not even useful but what if we wanted to use it for other purposes than just like calling it what it is or developing a personal expression of it um what else could we do um and that's that's kind of the ground we are whether it's from a platonic perspective nietzschean perspective human kantian whatever perspective thank you I um I don't want to derail from this deep deeper dive into the semiverse part, but uh, I have comments on the mining part that I think were um really um fundamental or maybe that uh, pointed towards specific mechanics that I think are is interesting, as in mining as in extracting, 
some form of resource and the fact that that resource that is extracted will be used in a process as a sort of uh, basic material for something else. Um, so we were when we were playing the semioverse mining, uh, in this case, we were playing the semioverse mining company and how they proceeded on their endeavors. Um, there was this intention of mining a specific area of the semioverse, for example, chairs, as in um, things to sit on. I don't know if that is the best sort of like um, ax picking place to start mining the chair semioverse, but let's let's do that. Place to sit on and how you start sort of like deconstructing the semioverse of the chair and you have to add support structures in the sense of you cannot let your semioverse mine collapse on you. Uh, so those mechanics, I don't want to go super deep into the game itself, but the mechanics of extracting resources, thinking of using th these resources for something else, and actually building the mine and supporting the tunnels that are built, uh, that was like really a, a very fun part of the exercise for me last time. Yeah, agreed. And I also enjoyed the kind of like one of the reasons to use the mining was really util utilitarian rather than essentialist. Like it's not saying this is mining, if, uh, that it should be mining for everybody. Like it's not a power play of dominance, but utilitarian in the sense that, hey, this can work for us here and now. And maybe it could work for others as well, but it's not like that we have to care about enforcing this on others. It's very much like how meaning is actually a power game. It, a meaning in itself contains an ex, almost like an extreme version of a power game. Like if you make a new concept, like you're almost expected to take part in the power, power game. Like the success of the concept that is becomes to rule this topic of Uberales. But is this the only game? Uh, the power game that we can play on it um, or could be played differently. That's that's a whole side, important side topic, but still a side topic here. But in terms of this play, like, um, and the kind of utilitarian aspect of it, like what can we make uh, functional, workable from this point of view of the minor? Um, I, I'll bring in kind of, continuation of what Pablo was saying, one example. So coming from the sort of minor perspective, and, and at this point we had sort of mining tools, like we had developed like, like kind of, uh, you could say like things that are kind of adjust, adjacent to concepts, um, but more operations in nature, like prospecting, uh, or surveying, uh, which was a certain practice you could do and some others. Uh, but as an example of it, like we developed um, a case of like, say some person would potentially in their work uh, space, um, that if there was a culture of semi first minors, like they could uh, say place um, in the cafe room where other people come in, they, they place one, maybe a big post-it or at least a visible one, which reads a puzzle. And then they place it at the very late evening, knowing that other people will come in, in the morning. They come to this cafe room of, of, of a kind of, general workplace of and they see this puzzle text there and then at the same time they placed on the table of that cafe room uh, a singular piece of like a, from a board game like a house symbol you know like these wooden houses that they sometimes have uh, like and then the question was like like what is mining here this was not some serious question of, once again, essentialism of mining. 
but how could this be mining in itself? Like, like maybe they come there early on in the morning to see how the people react, and uh, maybe they intentionally made this so that nobody knows that it was them who placed it. But then, how it could be mining is in the sense that if people engage this, like, how is this room a puzzle? And then there being this one wooden block of a house in the table, it's almost like a corridor in a mine, uh, in the mine of meaning. Uh, that So what is the connection between the puzzle and the house? And maybe they're simply exploring uh, how do people react to it? How do people interpret it? Which is in itself like producing new ways and pathways of meaning. Um, so, in in a sense, example that is nothing super serious, but it's pointing out, if one kind of wants to underline from there, a different kind of practice with meaning. Um, there was also another example was that what it would be like to um, arrive into the home of somebody who was a semi-averse minor, and there were many examples of like you know their friends expressing their frustration that you will always have to read the instructions in the doorway because like it's every time a fucking different space and what the fuck they have done now and how it's now a universe and then it's universe because they have sprinkled all kinds of little objects around the floor and that becomes the star map and maybe next time uh, it's something else and so on and this was kind, kind of like little excursions of how do you change your relation to the world in itself when you would have this kind of approach to the world. They were not super deep, they were not like some uh, glorious picture of what the miner should look like, but they were more like, um, I don't know, pictures of everyday life of the semi-oris miner. Um, but maybe maybe they are useful in, in and of themselves. And, maybe they open some possibilities and and to head out your question so semiverse is not really an existing concept there is some influence from yuri lockman's semiosphere who is a semiotic um i have i i think semiosphere sphere that Yuri Lotman was opening up was a good starting point. I have my problems with it, but I also respect a lot of what he was doing. I think he was kind of ex making excursion of towards this direction and I can point you to the books where he's opening this concept um uh, in i think uh sixties seventies yeah but but semiverse not not really and this was kind of more actually a development in the sessions um towards this sort of metaverse discourse informed by a certain semiotics uh language philosophy concepts so in this sense a new concept Thank you, because uh, I was searching to find maybe a link because you mentioned the Pilates or minor. I couldn't find that, so I asked that. No, it's new stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's, that would be the spelling, at least like for now. Senior. You might find something because, I mean, somebody else could make the concept in itself. I think there is something, something on it as there's something to everything in Google. But um, uh, because it's it's kind of like the expected combination if you take the word semio, which is the sign, um, and then verse. Uh, so somebody has probably used it in some fa uh, fashion, but it's not an established concept. Let's say it like that. Thank you. Thank you. And any interjections or Pablo, do you agree, disagree with my uh, illustrations, representations of 
the conversations of examples of the everyday life of a semiverse minor if that culture of play would exist. I agree. I mean, I think this is one of many multi semiverses, mm -hmm. but one, um, yeah, it's just as valid to explore. Yeah. And any questions? Also, by the way, there is a link to Yuri Lotman, the Wikipedia link on on his personal space. I will find the book links later uh, uh, to which books are, because I do have it, like the the book that where he kind of introduces or conceptualizes the semiosphere, but I don't have it offhand. So, question again I have, mm -hmm. is it okay? So still I'm trying to totally digest the whole topic. In, in Metaverse world, I, I believe it is kind of curiosity maybe in the, the things we are looking for in the physics. So to bring in reality, not a reality, to experience it like a, a material transformation. So, or maybe somehow traveling in time so I can, we can create kind of a virtual line and say the things that we started imagining, even you can find a lot in a Netflix, how to easily travel in a time or transfer the material from this place to that place. And instead of being in the video game, I can come to your apartment, you can come here, blah, blah, blah. So it is kind of this kind of explor exploration that it is, it is one, a step up our imagination that we can experience. It is for me about the metaverse. It means mm -hmm. create a virtual world and let's see what we are imagining if we would reach to the point that we can transfer the particle, we can transfer the parcel, we can transfer the material. So I can easily come to you, blah, blah, blah. It is, it is the whole, whole topic, just a surface for the metaverse. I just would like to see, so because you mentioned at the beginning, it seems you were playing something about the metaverse or semiverse. I just wanted to see if there is any connection here that it can give me more also, uh, more, 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 more connecting or integration point for these two. I hope I, I, I my question was not confusing. <laughs> no, no, I, I think it's a good question and let me, try to kind of take the kind of general approach to it. And like, yes, I think you can kind of make the connection with the metaverse, but also like with this kind of way you were describing it, like how do you come to kind of compose or at least an enter to metaverse. In terms of this, the, there was this question of like, um, like metaverse, of course, as a term has been picked partly because it's a cool term, et cetera. Like, it's supposed to be meta or everything, or it sounds at least dramatic and so on. Uh, but then like Semiverse um, is more pointing out that, okay, like rather than being in cool terms, like how to think about something that actually kind of pervades us constantly. Um, um, like, like you could say that we are in a Semiverse and then through that we filter the so-called world um, which is nothing new again, like, like you can go to Kant about the struggles of, of this precisely and, 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 uh, and so on, like there are many sources. But if one turns it into more practical terms, it's like maybe we take an example of this sort of, um, like going back to this sort of different techniques that kind of led us to this sort of semiverse mining paradigm was um, um, like, for example, this idea of prospecting, like what happens if you start your environment and uh, start to approach your environment with the practical question, like, like, for example, that I'm looking for, um, um, allegorical maps or maps of the other. 
and that I'm approaching the environment in the sense of seeing small details um, uh, of and maybe taking pictures like images, but I'm looking at these images, these photos I'm taking as, as kind of maps, and then I'm translating these maps into like uh, as a way to see other realities. What is that as an approach towards the semiotics, like alter alternative semiotics of that environment? But also with that question, you're opening up like that's just very, it's one approach, but there could be many, many approaches. Like that sentence, uh, maps of the other, which then turn, turned into practice of like, oh, I'm looking for the maps. I found a practical way of taking photos, but then looking at like, even if I'm taking an uh, image of uh, grass or certain plants and looking at it as a map, that's just one of the infinite approaches. But what is that use case in terms of like, uh, it, it's a different take on semiotics uh, and, and semantics also of the environment itself. And because there was actually a alarm, I will leave that question to you because I have to take care of the alarm. I will be back in two minutes. And now we are left alone, <laughs> floating in the semi-overs. <laughs> it's all a bit over my head, to be honest. It's it's absolutely um, hard to grasp, and I guess that's the point. Uh, yeah. I mean, and if you try to anchor yourself, you will probably be uh, left back. And yeah, just, no, I've, yeah. I've, I've stopped trying. Yeah, a few but sessions um, back. maybe I can I can do my best in sort of like simplifying the semiovers. Mm -hmm. So semiovers from semantics is sort of like the universe of meaning inside of a word. So inside of the inside of yeah in the universe of the chair as a concept, what can you extract from it in order to mine meaning? extract meaning from a specific place in the semiverse. If you would think of the semiverse as a space that you can navigate, how do you extract stuff from it, right? Um, and mining sort of like as the process of extraction and utilization of that thing that you extract. Peko, mm -hmm. I'm doing my best at sort of like simplifying to the most, um, yeah, pedestrian possible meaning of the semiverse mining uh, to sort of like help That's us. Great. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and I, I don't think there's one meaning. Like, I, like in a way, I <laughs> like that this session is playing around with the meanings. Like in a way, Martin hit the very right point in this, uh, like that there are other ways of looking at it uh, because like, the whole question is not about the right way of looking at it. Whether it's semi reverse mining or even semi reverse mining mean being the way of looking at it, it's, it's very much like the, the phrase itself is just an instrument. Like, like if you had a knife in your hand, you had a piece of wood, like the reality would, would be a piece of wood and that semi reverse mining would be a knife or a drill or a saw. And and then it would be a way to kind of uh, operate on that piece of wood. That question, like piece of wood and some tool to operate with that is not a question of the right thing. It's a question of like, if I have this uh, saw, it might be a good way if I'm looking for certain kind of features, like I'm looking to cut it in half, say. But, uh, but it, if it's in a tool position, it's not, it's not a discussion of is this the right tool. It's more like what does this tool do, and this is kind of maybe my example a moment ago before the delivery came in, which of course it was because deliverers are the new gods we have to follow and their fickle needs. 
of whenever they want to come. But anyway, like um, with that example, I kind of wanted to point out of certain things that opened up when we were using that tool um, that um, that uh, but of course, you could have arrived to those things like the, the sort of like map of the other, then that leading to photos, then that leading to finding actually pictures of flowers being maps, then those maps becoming um, maps of places, and then those places becoming maybe imaginary um, sources of maps of elsewhere. That's just like one dive into this space among the infinity so there's no right way to do that it, it seems to me as soon as we can for example in my room as soon as i can touch the meaning of each element for yeah. sure all the surrounding is going to be affected because the meaning of this one is going to be affect the meaning of the the meaning of the connected object so just imagine just let's go to to, to for so if i can say a cup doesn't need any stand to stay it means there is no need for any table that i can put a cup on it so and i can change the meaning of the table as a holder so and then i'm not gonna have uh, actually any holder as a four leg and table it means consequently changing one meaning or a definition of object it can penetrate to the the object the, me the meaning of the objects around it and the connection and the, the whole meaning of the atmosphere. And step by step, it can reach to the other object and uh, consequently with changing one meaning of any single object, the whole dramatically, the whole object is going to be changed. Yeah, and, and also like you could take as the framework of changing the meaning of how you approach things, like if you give yourself a different role, like the whole idea of the semi-earth minor kind of also changes your role. And that's another way of changing. You could change the object and that can start to cascade into other possibilities. But if you change your role, then you start to also cascade into other possibilities. But because it's an infinity of infinities, really, it, it then becomes a question of not finding the right way because in a way, the normal meaning is kind of in that discourse of like finding the right way. And maybe like not even saying that's a mistake it, because this does not have to try to topple that. It doesn't have to topple the common discourse, but rather it's just saying there are other ways. Uh, and like, it's not like to challenge the king, it's merely saying there are other, other places and they don't even have to be kingdoms, you know, um, uh, that, uh, but then it's also a question because there's infinity of them is like, okay, what takes you where? And what can you understand of this? Like, if I can see, for example, that this kind of way takes me in interesting directions, um, and then that's maybe valuable to communicate to others because if they get to kind of not the same place but similar places maybe that is a useful tool just like the knife is a useful tool because it doesn't get people to the same carvings but generally does interesting things to the wood that might be useful so and this this is also where you go to kind of this sort of semi mining in terms of meaning, because it seems to propose a rather different relation to meaning itself, which is that um, how we use language normally is to say, well, this is this. It, it's, it's very kind of like ontology defining, like we have to kind of say that this is this, but also agree on this and this. But if it's rather instrumental, that is like this does these kind of things with these things that we're facing, this environment. It's a different paradigm of meaning. It's 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 uh, it's saying that um, it's not trying even trying to say 
what should this be defined, but it's rather saying, okay, with this kind of tool, when you're working on meaning, just like you're working on a piece of wood with a knife, uh, you get these kind of operations and results. And while we have certainly some of that in our culture, and it would be shocking if it wouldn't, we don't necessarily have too much of that in our culture, and we don't have enough discourse of such a paradigm of towards meaning. And hence, like this semi vs minor is a very modest step in this darkness along many, many yet unnamed other possibilities of taking different steps in darkness, like uh, just like taking a new kind of knife in this piece of wood of the senses that we're in and the meanings that they propose. I think this this that you just said, Peko, is fundamental and might help sort of like clarify what's even the reason we want to do some semi-overse mining and mm -hmm. even connected to the idea of the cards, yeah. which is this approach to meaning that is malleable sort of like yeah. the potential of of meaning becoming uh even a playable sort of yeah um, element with operational capacities right yeah which is sort of the intention with the cards as well yeah to, yeah so i guess that's the reason why semi -overse mining is um profitable in the <laughs> quest for <laughs> quest for playable uh, modular systems mm -hmm. um, and how it relates to the whole card game kind of yeah it's like the meaning and all the senses that come with that like actually like putting the matter that is language that is senses all together almost like this wood what is our approach that has this sort of tools of malleability rather than to, uh, tools of definition. Not tools that point out fingers and say this is this and this is that and simply observe the thing to point out what it is, but tools that actually go there and modify, mutilate it uh, towards in terms of carving something else. It's, it's this difference of a paradigm that is, that is the key in this. And the semi mining simply being an example of that. Uh, do you want to expand on your comment, Hedaya? Thank you. Thank you. So the, my feeling right now it is I really I, I've got interested to if mm -hmm. can play it. So I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm in. I'm into play because it seems it is the fundamental exactly for a parallel world because yeah anything open a new world actually that's it so yeah it from any yes please no from anywhere just to when you say open a new world from anywhere anywhere just put the touch touch the new branch is gonna come touch mm -hmm. a new parallel is gonna come so i really would like to experience the playing the game so if i i, I think that that in a way it's it's just kind of like a a verse of exploration and 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 the, the, the kind of playing with this is kind of i think something that we're in one way or another trying to initiate uh, which is not one way of playing but like every way of playing in itself like opens a new spectrum to it but i do think like it seems to be a thematic where things are going like to play with that and so if you're into in in it, I think everybody else is in in it, um, to and in their own way. That's that's uh, which is a good thing. Like I, I think it's something that everybody should have their own take on how they want to play with it. Okay. Yes, I I think we're we're running to our towards our time of decency of um, we're over 130. Mm -hmm. But Rock, do you do you have any comments? Um, sure, yeah, uh, the last intervention. Um, yes. Yeah, well, it's, uh, 
yeah let's play for sure and, and wrap our heads or my head around this thing but one thing that I can sort of relate it to or, or map on to is like our translations and our research sort of engages in, in like critical discourse analysis or environmental discourse analysis and in a book we translated a few years ago deals with the institutionalization of ecological modernization as a discourse after like the acid rain mm. uh, like problem that was kind of the first uh, besides the ozone that, that kind of transgressed national boundaries mm. oh he froze yes just at the moment solutionism and we lost about uh five to ten seconds of like after you told about acid rain being mm -hmm. like one of the first general paradigms to to the cultural consciousness but then yeah uh yeah i don't know why um well um anyways it, it deals a lot with yeah questions of power and and discourse and institutionalization and i thought yeah maybe it has some some interesting implications here yeah let's process that i i think definitely could be and i would definitely appreciate and welcome your takes on this and and yeah let, and um i think like the next step is also finding kind of practicalities of how to play which are like I said infinite but but then you know that this is some something we, one can take navigation from art is like when the ways are infinite it all becomes a personal reflection and collective reflection of what kind of things are you interested in um that's that's always the question on infinity uh, which in itself is a i think a positive question like it's like when you can go infinite ways then you have to make your own way uh and uh and like to have that question on play that is reflecting or mirroring the question of art is rather interesting i think um uh, so i think one way to look forward to that is to kind of share ways of playing both in terms of like here's one approach but also trying like here's let's play practically this way or that way um and that's something to i think entertain in the future to take those possibilities but uh but yeah i i think that's um yeah, like from these explorations, if we can come to the point of offering it to others, maybe first modestly, like here's a way to walk you in, but then maybe later in a more wider fashion, um, however that is, is is something to also potentially strive towards. Uh, because it, yeah, it's a big change or big possibility at least. but. But I think, yes, now that we're in our um, time of indecency, which uh, starts after 1.30, uh, you know, 90 minutes into the session, you go from decency to indecency. Let's find a way to end. Um, any last comments, Frog Pablo? I created some renders of unopened can of cans of worms i will share them definitely share them like cans of worms there's a whole the new concept of can of worms and what to do with you know like slightly open can of worms the label of can of worms like can of worms made of plastic versus can of worm made of metal like like so like feed the mill like uh it it uh will appreciate your contribution definitely yeah, yeah. the semiverse mining of can of worms also yielded the cant of worms and the could of worms so those are also interesting um worm containers yes uh but yeah i mean bumpy road ahead to try to make this um accessible to to people who have not 
dealt with the card making process. So let's um, let's just play. I think like let's yeah. make some of the cards accessible in a way that they are. I mean, maybe just give access to the Google Drive, and uh, so that people can the familiarize. Discord. Yeah, and the Discord familiarize themselves with them, and then just do some some simple games. It's not that we have played a lot with them, so mm. it's just as um, we're just as new in the playing with the cards. Yeah. And I, I think it's, I agree that one can think of it as Pompey, but the Pompey, the answer to that is simply to make the bumps uh, as practical play. Like, uh, like how to make it understandable is to, uh, is ultimately how to make it playable. Uh, because like through the play, you get the double card that people understand it differently because everybody plays differently. And, and at the same time, develop some tangibility because then the play itself is tangibility yeah that's not like a like a magic solution in itself but i do think it's a fertile way of looking at the solution it's to make it playable but with that uh i think your finishes were better than what i offered i was very traditional i was like making closure thoughts so I apologize for everybody for my normative ending. And with that apology, I will stop the recording. <laughs>